And more on our top story now. Singapore is looking to fund local media talent to deepen their skills. There will be a new international co-production fund and there will be a push to hire overseas trainers to teach virtual production here. For more on this, we're joined by Senior Minister of State for Communications and Information, Tan Kiat Hao, and also Nick Tan, he's CEO of Oceanus Media Global, his company already making use of virtual production technology. Welcome, gentlemen. Let's start with you, SMS Tan. Now, we just heard from Dawn there, there's a big stress on international, so getting Singapore talent to go global. Why does that matter? Well, we saw and Dawn, happy to be here again. Uh, this investment is really our, our confidence in the talent in our media ecosystem. SMF, the Singapore Media Festival, celebrates its 10th anniversary this year. And over the last 10 years, we've seen significant shifts in the media landscape from streamers like platforms like Disney+, Plus, Amazon Prime, IT, for example, to new ways of creating content or even bite-sized content. But our media ecosystem have continued to adapt and thrive in this new world. And looking forward in the next 10 years, we think there are many exciting opportunities. The Asia-Pacific market is set to grow from Singapore $1.65 trillion this year to $2 trillion in 2028. And we are seeing how we can help our media ecosystem ride this growth. And there are three important ingredients in this growth story. The first is partnerships. Uh, we are very heartened to see the success over the last few years in co-productions. There is big demand for the world to work together for talent, on screen and off screen. And in fact, Singapore was the first Southeast Asian country to support co-productions. Very, very good successes. And we are making a big investment in this space, helping our local media ecosystem talent to work with international counterparts, both in terms of production, but also of distribution. So we are setting aside $30 million over the next few years to support international co-production of high-quality drama to bring our stories with a Singapore flavour to the global audience. The second is really around people. We are continuing to invest in our people. It's about what we do, how we tell stories in different modalities using technology especially. And we have a very exciting new technology called virtual production, using technology to create backdrops where real shooting can be done on screen. And it's amazing because we can think about a fantastical landscape, Chinatown in the 1970s, futuristic spaceships, or recreating old buildings like the National Library. And this is a space we, which we think Singaporeans can be competitive in, where technology meets media. And we are setting aside an additional $25 million over the next few years which brings our total investment in this to $30 million, which includes $5 million, which I launched last year. So $30 million for international co-productions, bringing our media talent to the world, and also investing in a new technology, virtual productions. Mm. We will be hearing more about the virtual production from, from Nick Tan in, in a, a second, SMS Tan, but uh, I wanted to ask you, media as a form of soft power, uh, this is something that we haven't necessarily leveraged on as well as some of our regional sort of counterparts, uh, Thailand, Indonesia, uh, even oh, South Korea, of course, and, and China being some of those uh, regions where they have kind of a little bit more experience mm. than we do on this. Uh, why are we behind? I mean, how are these investments actually going to kind of change that? I mean, you mentioned partnerships, but what will the money specifically sort of do? Well... Dot, I will frame it this way. Is the media sector important to Singapore? They are on a few levels to address this question. First, it's a very important sector for us to tell our own stories. It, it builds into our cultural identity. It tells about stories of our past, our aspirations for the future. It's our Singaporean stories. And our media sector is an important storyteller in this regard. The second, the media sector is a good growth industry. You're creating good jobs, companies with global competition uh, power, and also a ability for us to expand our economic space and market space beyond our little red dot. And thirdly, it is a 
it's an industry which people are very passionate about. Mm. When I speak to young uh, students in polytechnics or in the universities who look forward to a career in the media sector, they are passionate about this sector. So it creates good jobs, good careers, but also allows us to tell our stories. And that is why we are continuing to work with our ecosystem partners to invest in partnerships in terms of people and new technologies. All right, speaking of new technologies, Mr. Tan, let's bring you in on this. Uh, virtual production. Now, Mr. SMS Tan was speaking of recreating old backdrops, old buildings. Or oh, I think of Jurassic Park, actually, how it was filmed, where the actors were saying they're looking at a tennis ball and pretending they're actually looking at dinosaurs. So there are obvious differences in terms of virtual production. But in terms of the tech you need, the people you need, the infrastructure that has to be in place so that this, as SMS Tan mentioned, makes the best of Singapore's strengths. How different is virtual production from non-virtual production? Thanks for having me and uh, thank you, Minister. So, to be honest, virtual production is a fairly new technology that, of course, gave birth during the pandemic. Um, actually, before the pandemic, uh, people have been using virtual production for quite a while. So, I'm a fan of uh, you know, Jurassic Park, Star Wars, and the likes of it. And um, the use of virtual production is basically combining the use of real-time game engine like Unreal Engine with traditional production methods and technology like you know camera trackers, LED volume. So in a sense that it actually gives you, gives the audience a more realistic feel. Not just that to the producers and the directors, they actually get to have a sense of realism where they can see what the actors are in. In fact, they could actually see where the actors are already in place in the environment, in an LED volume, on their screen. This, this whole you know, experience actually gave birth to a whole new world of like, creativity and a better storytelling. Mm. So you can use that technology with storytelling, I mean, the, the new technology with storytelling and combine it with other technologies as well? Indeed. In fact, um, virtual production is a combination of different, um, I would say, technology and skill sets. You have the people who predominantly came from the game industry that does the you know, the game engine, which I think a lot of the young generations would already know. And then you have the traditional filmmakers that do the film. And then you have the visual effects people who have been doing scenes right, for the filmmakers. Now you combine all these three together in a real time visualization, you get virtual production. Mm. And it's not just for film, TV, or just uh, dramas. It's a use for marketing campaigns, for example. And you no longer have to go out to the physical site to shoot it. But we can design it virtual in a virtual production studio. Mm -hmm. And I just want to build on what uh, Nick has said and why virtual production is big, unique and quite different from the old ways of doing things. It actually blends in different capabilities and skill sets from gaming engines, which are Unreal Engine we should use, uh, for people who have a creative mind, the producers, the creative directors, but also people who create visual e effects, the technology people. And this blend of skill sets is not so easily found in anywhere in the world. <coughs> and that is why I think Singapore has a good chance of making it happen and building an ecosystem around it. Indeed, indeed, Minister is right. And in fact, um, in the uh, industry right now in uh, the region, typically you, you have the um, 3D studios, you have the production companies, you have the studios itself, you have the film production company, and then you have the game people, right? These people and also the post-production and visual effects, they don't actually talk to in each other. But uh, it just so happened that, you know, during the pandemic, we, you know, we actually have to combine these skill sets together. It actually puts Singapore in a very good position to actually you know, anchor this uh, virtual production into our workflow. And also, Minister has highlighted that it's not just for the film and media. In fact, uh, we actually did the uh, Olympic eSports opening and closing ceremony, which really uses some of the most you know, advanced of technology in that whole launch and campaign. And that brings us to the next question for SMS Tan. Yes. So, as you mentioned, not just film med and media, that you, in fact, you mentioned mm. marketing campaigns mm. as well. So within the industry or the various industries that are related to each other, gaming, film, media, they can all benefit mm. from our growing this, this mm. pie, as it were. But there are other sectors that could have spin-off benefits from our developing and investing in this particular mm. sector. That, indeed, you are right, uh, Wei Su. In fact, actually, uh, we are just a very uh, emergent uh, technology. It's a very nascent state of development. But the sky's the limit. You apply the same virtual production technology and capabilities to marketing, to digital campaigns, even to education later on. 
So I think it's a technique, it's a, uh, it's a competitive uh, advantage that we have in terms of blending many of these capabilities and we can apply it to different sectors. Exciting opportunities to come uh, in the production scene. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming into the studios. Uh, we've been speaking there to Senior Minister of State for Communications and Information, Tan Kiat Hao, and Nick Tan, CEO of Oceanus Media Global. Thanks for joining us.